from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Divers are back in the water searching for a teenager swept off the coast of Pacific Beach. We have a breaking news update for you now. They are calling the search a recovery mission. I'm Virginia Chalk. And I'm Brian Chlonsky in for Jason Martinez. 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala has been following their efforts all morning. She has the challenges divers are now facing. Hey, Mimi. Hey, Brian, Virginia. Yeah, we've just learned about five minutes ago that crews will start using a vessel that can actually scan for objects under the water uh, to search for this missing teenager. This hasn't been an easy mission for these divers you see still out there. The crews are all still here right now, but the water has been really rough and there's a lot of fast moving water going north and a rip current in the area where that boy was last seen. So crews have been searching in the water and above. That's an aerial search early this morning and divers back in the water around 8. This after stopping their mission when it just got too dark yesterday. They've been extensively searching from Windermere Court to Pacific Beach Drive. It's where the 17 year old from El Cajon was last seen in waist deep water. He was with four other friends. Two were rescued yesterday evening when they were caught in the large waves. But crews are diving using boats and choppers. A Coast Guard boat and helicopter even stayed in search through the night and morning but found nothing. The visibility is under five feet. We're told two to three feet right now, making things difficult. Ken Seiler has lived in the area for more than 50 years. He says he sees inexperienced swimmers get caught in the riptides far too often and wants everyone to know just how dangerous this can be. It's just so unfortunate. I mean, da really dangerous conditions this time of year. The bottom's really uneven, riptides everywhere. I just hope that they can recover them and, and have some closure for the family. We're told divers are going to be done in the water by noon. They're going to be searching the pier area, but the Coast Guard will continue their efforts throughout the day. We will keep you posted with any new information. For now, reporting live at Pacific Beach, Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Oh, so sad. Thank you, Mimi. Happening today, San Diego teachers are pleading for their jobs. Before each teacher makes a case, they are rallying together. 10 News reporter Mary McKenzie live in Claremont. So, Mary, what are the teachers there saying? Virginia, they're inside this auditorium right now at Madison High School. In fact, it's one of the only venues big enough to hold the hundreds who have come today to fight for their jobs. They're the sounds of support for teachers facing pink slips. In Claremont this morning on a street corner, they lean on each other before marching into school to face a judge and fight for their jobs. More than a thousand teachers got pink slips last month to make up for a $124 million budget shortfall. Some of those will be called back, the number unnecessarily high according to the teachers union. For one thing, hundreds of teachers may take a golden handshake, which would mean many of those pink slips would be rescinded. The whiplash effect on veteran educators like Lorene Dabney, with more than 30 years under her belt, is still painful and shocking. You'd have to increase class sizes. You would have to um, put the teachers in there who are not experienced like we are to take care of those kids. So it would be a disaster. Now, these hearings could go on all week. If a district employee received a pink slip by mistake, they could be reinstated immediately. The rest will have to wait until early May to find out whether or not they have a job. We're live in Claremont this morning. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. We will wait and see. All right, thanks, Mary. A circuit court judge in Chicago is dead in a shooting outside his home. Associate Judge Raymond Miles and his female acquaintance were both shot before five this morning. The woman encountered someone with a gun outside Miles' home. Well, Miles then heard the commotion. He was shot several times after talking with that shooter. There's no word yet on a motive. A neighbor believes Miles and the woman were going to work when they were shot. And new developments today from the Supreme Court. Justice Neil Gorsuch was just sworn in. Yeah, he is filling the seat left open by the death of Antonin Scalia. Here's ABC's Janae Norman. Please raise your right hand. Judge Neil Gorsuch, now the 113th person to be sworn in to the highest court in the country. I, Neil M. Gorsuch, do solemnly swear. Gorsuch's confirmation marked the first major win for the Trump administration with Congress. The most important thing that a president of the United States does is appoint people 
to the United States Supreme Court. And I got it done in the first 100 days. That's even nice. But also another political first, confirming a Supreme Court nominee with a simple majority vote, 54 yeas to 45 nays. I believe it will make this body a more partisan place. It didn't have to be this way. But today is a new day. It's taken more than a year to get to today. The long road to a new Supreme Court justice was paved with partisan politics. Last year, Republicans refused to consider President Obama's pick to fill the spot, Judge Merrick Garland, arguing the next president should choose the nominee. And this year, Democrats argued Gorsuch's record was too conservative and moved to filibuster his nomination. With Gorsuch now sworn in, the Supreme Court returns to its previous balance, four conservatives, four liberals, and Justice Anthony Kennedy as the swing vote. Gorsuch could be a deciding vote in upcoming cases that include housing discrimination, church and state separation, and same-sex rights, including a case involving a Colorado baker who refused to bake a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. We have breaking news right now in the 10 News Live Center. There has been a shooting at an elementary school in San Bernardino. It is North Park Elementary School. It looks like initial reports came in as one child was shot, but we have this tweet from the San Bernardino police chief. He says that uh, preliminary info is four victims, and the latest update is that they believe this is a murder-suicide. It happened in a classroom. Two students have been transported to the hospital. The teacher was also shot. Of course, this is a developing story, and I will continue to follow this and bring you any new details. Virginia? All right, thank you, Kalina. Now to this developing story. Egypt in a state of emergency after bombs exploded at two Christian churches yesterday. The two different attacks targeted Palm Sunday services in Tanta and Alexandria, killing more than 40 people. ISIS claimed responsibility yesterday. The Egyptian president declared a state of emergency that will last three months. Soon after that announcement, a rocket landed in southern Israel just ahead of Passover. ISIS claimed responsibility for that attack too. New today, officers are lining the streets in London for the funeral of the policeman killed in the extremist attack last month. Constable Keith Palmer was stabbed by Khalid Massoud on March 22nd as he guarded the Palace of Westminster. Officers will be observing two minutes of silence throughout the country today. Palmer's coffin spent the night at a chapel at Parliament with special permission from Queen Elizabeth II. Four other people were also killed in that attack. And San Diego sailors are headed toward North Korea. The Carl Vincent Strike Group was supposed to be in Australia, but now it's heading north. The Pentagon is moving the carrier group in response to the Scud missile that North Korea fired into the ocean. The Carl Vincent left San Diego three months ago. This is a developing story. Police are investigating the owner of a van that exploded into flames in North Park. Our 10 News Breaking News tracker was there just after the flames erupted at midnight. And look at that. Firefighters say it started in the front seat. The van was engulfed by the time they arrived. That fire exploded a few times. Shoot, they're right there, shooting glass into the street. Firefighters finally put it out. No word on what started it. A suspected drunk driver wobbling while walking the line in Poway. Police say he drove into another car, took out a light pole. Video from our 10 News Breaking News tracker shows a light pole in the middle of the road near Glen Oak. This is Pomerado Road. Police say the driver of the black BMW rear-ended a Honda, then hit a tree, and then the light pole. Police arrested the BMW driver after a field sobriety test. The Honda driver went to the hospital with some minor injuries. Happening today, San Diego City Council members debating new rules for drones. If their plan passes, police would be able to fine owners for flying their drones near airports or emergency operations. The founder of a local drone business says that most owners are already cautious about where they fly. Everyone that's doing this now is, has time and money invested in it and they don't want to get overregulated, so they're very careful with where they're flying and how they're flying. So if the plan passes, violators could face a $1,000 fine or six months 